What's good, everybody? It's Big Game James, man. I'm back in the building. And we're going to talk right quick. Just some thoughts. You know, I ain't trying to, uh, you know, I've just been sitting here thinking about so many things right now. But one of the things I've been thinking about is uh, Dan Quinn. Everybody been getting on Kellen Moore. I get it. I understand it. I don't, I'm not running, I'm not defending him right now, but I don't hate on him. He deserves criticism, but he deserves some praise too. Y'all just don't want to give it to him. That's fine. But let's talk about Dan Quinn, in my opinion. First of all, I don't dislike Dan Quinn. Uh, I'm glad they had brought him on board. He changed, uh, I like how he's hands on with the players. Um, you know, the, the player's coach, but sometimes you can be too much of a player's coach. You feel me? Um, but you know what? Dan Quinn, he got to get this fire too. Uh, I remember once upon a time, maybe about three weeks ago, Dallas was like second in the league and points given up. Now they're seventh at 19.2. The running game has not been good all year. They've given up 1,863 yards. Good for 24th ranked in the league. They've given up. Uh, they've had 403 rushing attempts against them. Good for 25th. And teams are still averaging over 4.5 yards a carry. Good for 22nd. And then... Let's go over here. Because I was looking at some other things. Let's talk about the draft. So, I just mentioned those numbers, right? So, everybody is getting on Kellen Moore, the offense, that Prescott, all that good stuff, right? But when are you going to talk about this defense? Because it's a team game. Defense being given it up. Okay? Defense being given up. You almost lost to the Texans. Was that all the offense? That was the defense, too. That was killing us on the RPO with David Mills and whoever the other quarterback was, right? Justin Fields killed us. Killed Dallas. Uh, Jalen Hurts did his thing. You feel me? Against Dallas. You feel me? So it's kind of like we talking about offense. We talking about the receiving. We're talking about all those things. But when I see the defense giving up all these yards to Indianapolis Colts. You feel me? We blew them out in the fourth quarter. Right? But it was the defense. Then the Houston Texans. Almost, you almost lost to them. Then the Jacksonville Jaguars dropped 40 on you. You feel me? So, and they ran for 100 and what? The running back, Travis Antion, ran for over 100 yards. Teams have been running on us all year. So, when you're talking about the offense, when you're talking about Dak Prescott, when you're talking about Kellen Moore and all that good stuff, put this dude to the fire too because they're not doing their job. And ain't like they got super major injuries because they ain't super major players. Anthony Brown, okay, we're going to say he a major player. Jordan Lewis, we're going to say they're major players. And then you lost your recent uh, signing in Hankins. But he ain't even been with the team all year. You were the defensive coordinator who, I don't know if you were the guy that said, let's pick these draft picks. But let's talk about these draft picks. If you look about look at the last year when Dan Quinn came on board, I don't know if he was in the draft room and said, "Oh, let's get this guy, let's get that." But when I, I heard some of the players said they Dan Quinn met met them personally, so when I look at the draft last year, Michael Parsons, Kelvin Joseph, Osa Ogadazua, Chauncey Golston, Nashawn Wright, Jabril Cox, Quentin Bohanna, Izzy Mukamu, who's turning up in that draft from last year? Micah, that's it. You drafted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight defensive players last year. Only one is really making a difference right now from last year, and that's Micah. And he's been he's been going through his struggles a little bit because you're consistently putting him on the edge. You're a defensive coordinator in the NFL, so I ain't telling you how to do your damn job. But what I am saying is this: you drafted eight players, only one is really doing something significant. Kelvin Joseph, not doing anything. Osa Ogadazul, who was the darling last year, and I think, think Osa is a good player. But the, the fits you put him in and the positions you put him in, putting him over the middle all the time, I think he'd be better on the outside. Me and a guy had talked about it that he might be better at the edge because he can set the edge better because of his size and what he brings to the table. 
You putting him in the middle all the time, he's undersized, and those big boys is eating him. You ain't even heard about Chauncey Golston, right? Nashawn Wright just played last week. He had been inactive all year. Jabril Cox, who was the darling, ain't getting no smoke at all. None. And he was the fourth round draft pick that you were like, oh, that's the surprise pick. Jabril Cox going to turn up. He ain't even seen the field. Quentin Bohanna, I like you, but I, they're averaging 4.6 yards a carry. He's a big boy in the middle. So obviously that's not working like that, right? Izzy Mukamu, I like him, but he ain't getting no significant snaps. He getting snaps here and there. He was the darling in preseason. He ain't getting no real, real snaps in the regular season. So this 2021 draft, I'm not saying it's a bust, but you got a lot of defensive players that ain't making no, no waves. You feel me? And I just showed you those numbers. So while we always talking about the offense and we always talking about Dak Prescott and Dak this, Dak that, Dak this, Dak that, always Dak, always Kellen Moore. Always... Bro, what about this defense, though? I'm a defensive guy. You Defense win championships. Is this a championship defense right now? Let's keep it real. No, it's not. Not right now, it's not. Okay? We was feeling good about the defense. I was feeling great about the defense because I love defense. Defense is what wins championships. I can pull up these Super Bowl, and I'm a, my next video, I think you're going to like my next video. But, uh, you know, we can show teams where you had average quarterbacks. Average quarterbacks. Went to Super Bowls. They had, a, had to have some kind of something else. So defense does matter. You got to be able to stop the opponent. They went from second in the league scoring to, like, seventh now. Now, this year's draft, you had Sam Williams, De'Ron Bland, Damon Clark. Devin Harper. Devin Harper ain't getting no smoke. Deron Bland is turning up four interceptions. We see uh, we see a lot of potential in him and what he's doing in the game right now, which is very dope. But he's done taking his lumps. And that's only one year, half a year. We got to see it again. But we're talking about now. Sam Williams, he's uh, definitely shown. I like Sam Williams. He's got three sacks. Um, but he's still a backup right now. He was drafted in the second round. And he's a backup. Damone Clark. I love Damone Clark. But, you know, once LVE and Anthony Barr came back, his snaps got reduced. You feel me? So, and when we talking about Trevor Lawrence throwing four touchdowns on us? Tre Trevor Lawrence throwing four touchdowns? The, the Houston Texans moving the ball up and down the field on us? Colts did it too until the what fourth quarter and then they had the explosion. It was defense. I give it to you. Colts ain't that good though. They just gave up a lead to who? The Vikings, who the Dallas Cowboys smashed. They was up 33 nothing and then gave up that lead. So I ain't saying nothing about the Colts. So that shouldn't even feel good that you set a record against them because they just set a record this past week on giving up the biggest lead. So I don't count that Colts. You feel me? You can count that Colts. And now you got the Eagles coming up, you got the Titans coming up, and then you got the Commanders coming up. It's like Dallas dominates these not so good teams. One of them real teams come up in there, offensive teams come up in there. Dallas be getting worked. You know what I'm saying? So, me personally, we got to put some fire to Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn got to step up. That defense got to step up because if that defense don't step up, they ain't going nowhere. The offense ain't carrying Dallas in the Super Bowl, to, a, to a Super Bowl. Not in my opinion. No, it's not. It's not carrying. This offense is not carrying the team. Not me. And it ain't just Dak Prescott. I just don't feel like this offense is like super dynamic. Maybe it's Kevin Moore. Uh, it's not just Dak Prescott. Yeah, he has something to do with it too. But you don't got no dynamic receivers. You feel me? You don't. You got C.D. Lamb who's turning up, but you ain't got nobody else. You just got T.Y. Hilton, but he is older. Noah Brown, uh, Dennis Houston, when he started. Jalen Tolbert's a non-factor. Um, Michael Gallup is struggling. Uh, what, one catch? Zero catches. I mean, he ain't been doing nothing. I think he in 11 games, he has 31 receptions. He's averaging three catches a game. And Kellen Moore's like, oh, we got to get him the ball more. 
He, he ain't really turning up. He ain't he ain't fully back from that ACL. Y'all signed him off that ACL. But I ain't even trying to talk about the offense right now. Right now, if you're talking about a team right now with the last three games of the year, this defense got to get together. That's what has to happen to me, in my opinion. It's got to be this defense getting together. I'm not relying on the offense. Offense can make some plays, but it's got to be this defense. This defense has got to carry the Cowboys the last three games and in the playoffs. It's got to be the defense. So, Dan Quinn, you got to figure it out, in my opinion. You got to figure it out how to get this together because teams are moving the ball almost like it's nothing. They are, and it's been happening like the last three or four weeks. You feel me? And that run defense has just not been good all year. It wasn't good last year toward the middle, middle, in the middle of the season, toward the end of the season, and all this year it's been bad. Teams have been running all on Dallas. And let me tell you something. If you can run in the playoffs, you can run on a team in the playoffs, that team going to get beat. So, you... Teams have been averaging 4.6, 4.7 yards a carry all year against this defense. So if this defense can't show these last few games, and when it gets in the playoffs, it's gonna be a wrap. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a quick, it's gonna be quick. It's gonna be a first round exit. If this defense don't get it together, I'm not even talking about the offense. If this defense don't get it together, it's gonna be a first round exit, in my opinion. Because Dallas needs this defense to be good. Damn near great. This defense has to be good. Damn near great. So, that's why I feel like some of this fire got to go to Dan Quinn too from my perspective. I ain't talking about nobody else's perspective. And respectfully how I say this, I don't care about nobody else's perspective. You know what I'm saying? This is just me talking. No disrespect to anybody else. But in my opinion, Dan Quinn, you got to continue. He's not bulletproof in this. The honeymoon is over. I And I ain't even hating on Dan Quinn, but the honeymoon is over in my opinion. You can't just keep on saying, oh, Dan Quinn this and Dan Quinn that. You know, Dan Quinn had an opportunity to get a job somewhere else. But you remember what happened when Dan Quinn had a job at Atlanta? He had one, two good years, and it was over, and it was bad after that. You feel me? And in that Seattle, he wasn't the leader of the Legion Boom. Gus, uh, I can't remember his last name, was the one that started that. He kind of, once he moved on, he took it over. I don't remember Dan Quinn building the Legion of Boom. If he did, somebody find that out for me. Did Dan Quinn build the Legion of Boom? Because I don't think he did. I think it was that Gus Cat that built that Legion of Boom. He was there. And this, understand this, this ain't, this ain't him. I'm just talking what it is. And I was saying this before he even got hired. Like, because understand this, and I'm not dissing, but when we when Dallas was talking about getting ready to sign him, me and Boss Cowboys, I was like, ah, I ain't mad at if you want to hire Dan Quinn because I knew they were going to do it because of Legion Boom, but I smelt softness. I smelt softness. I was like, ah, I don't want to. And then, you know, he came through, turned up, and I was like, yeah, okay, that's what's up. You know, I'm wrong. But there was a reason why I was feeling that way. I was like, eh, you're over in Atlanta, kind of softness, and now I'm seeing those things over here after, you know, the first, remember that first year over in Atlanta, it was a great honeymoon turning up, Super Bowl going crazy, and then right after that, getting ate up. When Gus left, okay, how long did that Legion of Boom turn up? I could be wrong, but how long did it turn up after when Gus left, you feel me? So that's what we got to look at, that dynamic too. He may start off hot when he get with an organization, but do he stay hot? Because it, it tends to cool down after that. It starts out hot, but it tends to cool down after that. And that's what it feels like it's cooling down now. The cool, the cool down period is coming again. The cool, it was hot when it started in Atlanta. It cooled quick. It was hot in Seattle. It cooled. It was hot in Dallas. Now it's cooling. That's a trend to me. Just my opinion. So... Everybody's talking this and that and pointing their fingers at Kellen Moore and Dak and this and that. I need to start looking at Dan Quinn too. Because if this defense don't step up and get it together, it's going to be a first round exit. I'm Big Game James. I'm out. Peace.